Hello, everyone. Plus one to the seat belts. We're going to be moving quickly. Can we get our slides? OK, my name is Daniel Farrell. I work for Red Hat under the R&D office on the SDN team. Uh, I'm dfarrell 7 everywhere. Uh, I need to find my clicker. Which brings me to, I just tweeted out these slides. So if you want to find those, that's how you would do it, D-F-A-R-R-E-L-L-0-7. Um, so what's Vagrant? Jumping in, we have very little time. The quickest way I can put it, simplest way I can put it, is that it's a tool for working with virtual machines. In fact, it's a modular framework for working with virtual machines, which we'll see more of in a second. Um, it all starts with a Vagrant file, and it's kind of all orchestrated through that Vagrant file. So that can be very simple. You'll see more examples in a second. And then very simple commands. So Vagrant up, Vagrant SSH, and then we have a shell. Um, that's cool, but we've been able to work with, or with uh, virtual machines through the CLI for a long time. So VBox manage, create VM, we could wrap scripts around this and have similar functionality. Um, per a very nice rant that uh, Mitchell went and did on Hacker News for us, we have some insight into sort of the harder problems that they solved uh, with Vagrant, it, you know, on top of what could be done with shell scripts. A lot of that is around cross OS support. So Vagrant is a cross OS platform. You can use it with OS X or Windows or various Linux distributions. Um, it also does a lot of networking out of the box for you. So as soon as you stand up your VM, all of your network's working, and that's cross OS. It also does a lot of synced directory work for you. So the directory that contains your Vagrant file automatically gets synced into your box and vice versa. Here I'm showing the contents of root Vagrant, and then I'm creating a new file, uh, root Vagrant foo, and then I'm logging out of the VM and showing that it's been synced uh, back to my local system. Um, finally, it solves all of these problems in a modular way, which we'll show in a second, which would be very difficult for shell scripts. Um, so here's a really important concept, Zolna and difficult thing. There are two really important P words here in Vagrant world, provisioners and providers. Provisioners and providers, provisioners and providers, key concepts. Providers provide virtualization support. Essentially, they magic VMs into existence. There are two types of providers, local and remote. Uh, local providers are things like VirtualBox, Libvirt, uh, VMware, Docker. Yes, Docker, so you can manage containers, not just virtual machines. When I said it's a VM management tool, there was a slight white lie there. Um, also, remote providers, things like OpenStack, DigitalOcean, AWS. Um, second major P word, provisioners. Provisioners provision the VM, or they do shared repeatable configuration against the VM. Um, there's some simple on-ramp provisioners, like the shell provisioner. You can do just inline commands. You can point at shell scripts. Nice little uh, way to get started. There are also powerful options for people who need things like that. So Ansible roles, Puppet, um, Puppet uh, chefs, all Puppet modules. Um, you can mix and match. As a Vagrant practitioner, you would then go and mix and match uh, provisioners and providers based on the knowledge that you have to sort of solve the use case that you need. Let's see that through some examples. Here's kind of the most minimal example. We're saying vagrant init m, the name of the box. That creates the file that we're catting out in the second command here. Um, the file says that we want to start with a fresh CentOS 7 environment and do no additional configuration. We can then uh, boot this virtual machine with vagrant up. That downloads our base box if we don't have it cached locally already. It boots the VM, and it does our cross OS networking and synced folder magic. We can then connect with vagrant SSH, and huzzah, we have a shell on our new machine. Uh, second example, quickly, this uses the shell provisioner. So we have the similar configuration on the first line. In this case, we're starting from a Fedora 22 box. And then we're saying we want to run this inline shell command, which in this, our case installs some system dependencies using DNF. We can boot our box with Vagrant up again. We do the same networking and shared directory magic. And then we run our shell provisioner, which will install those system dependencies, as we'd expect. Third example, this one uses Ansible. So first line, similar. We're starting with a Vagrant base box. That's uh, Fedora 22. Second chunk is the con configuration for the Ansible provisioner. Basically, what's going on is that we're pointing out a playbook file, which is kind of an Ansible thing that you don't really need to understand, but it's pretty simple. We're saying for all host, as root, install open daylight, which is a project that I contribute to, and accept all the defaults. Uh, when we do our Vagrant up, we do the same magic around networking and such, and then we run our Ansible provisioner that installs open daylight. We can connect to our box with Vagrant SSH and then use pseudo system control as active open daylight to verify that our open daylight systemd service is running. So concluding with some sort of high level points about why I think you should use Vagrant, why it's an awesome tool, it provides well-defined environments that you understand, right? So you know what you installed, you know what's configured in this environment, you can go back and reference that easily. Um, it's also easy to share those environments with your team members. Now, this can be like your individual team members in a company, particularly powerful for open source communities though, I will attest, as we use it all the time in the upstream. Um, the Vagrant file that sort of defines all of this is done is in version control, so there's lots of benefits around that, looking at the history, uh, the contributions, going back in time, um, being able to review code as it's changing and such. 
It also replaces binary VM artifacts, which is sort of the traditional thing that we're switching out here. So VM, VM blobs have issues around figuring out what software is installed in them um, and copyright things that follow from that. So this is a nice win for open source projects as well. Your environment and code ship together. So when you git pull your repository, you also get the Vagrant file that defines the environment of how to run it. Um, you're able to reuse existing logic around configuration management. So if you have a complicated project that you've solved the deployment with an Ansible role or something, you cannot duplicate that effort and just consume it in Vagrant. Your local deploys and your remote deploys look very similar. So if you're a dev working on software on your local box and, you're an, and you have an ops person as well, their deployment pipeline will look very similar to stand up <coughs> tens of these pieces of software in production. That's all I have and I'm out of time. My name is Daniel Farrell again, dfarrell7 everywhere. Thank you for your time.